So then the central limit theorem, how many of you know what the central limit theorem is? as the sample size goes to infinity, it'll approach a Gaussian distribution, right? So um, does that make sense to everybody? So the way it, I think another way of looking at it is if you have, if you have say, you know, a huge collection of random variables belonging to any statistical distribution, right? So they could be sampled from Poisson, they could be sampled from, you know, um, exponential. If you start taking their mean, right? Or even it just their sum, <laughs> Then, um, then you look at the statistical distribution of the sum or of the mean of those, of that collection of random variables, that distribution would be a normal distribution. Does that make sense? So I just wanted to demonstrate that here quickly, and this will help you understand both RAND and RAND N2. So say RAND 1 comma 100,000, you can imagine that that's a vector of 100,000 elements, right? which can represent one random variable, right? So it's like, you can think of it as just the distribution, right? I have sampled 100,000 elements from the uniform distribution, so it's giving me a fairly good idea of one random variable which has a uniform distribution. Does that make sense? Right? So now my question is, how many such random variables do you need to get the standard normal distribution, right? So I can, you know, theoretically, of course, you need an infinite. I want to know for practical purposes, say, how many such random variables do I need to get to a normal distribution? Does that make sense so far? Everybody with me? Please ask right now because this is going to get a little hairier as we go through. Okay. So then um, I'm just defining again, this is sort of what I was telling you about not hard coding. I've defined everything I need here, right? I've talked about this sample n, which is just that. Number is is about how many such random variables, so that is going to be between one and 16. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna guess that 16 is good enough, right? And then bin centers, this will come up later when I'm drawing histograms. This is there's just some variables I've defined here. Now, I'm going to compare the normal distribution I get from summing up a lot of uniform random numbers to the rand n function, okay? Because the rand n I know comes from the standard normal distribution, so I'm just gonna sum up a lot of uniform random numbers and see how many of those random num uniform random numbers I need till I start approximating a random. And I want to talk about the hist command. You can see what the hist command does here is it's going to, I'm going to specify this huge vector of, you know, random number values and then basically the bin centers I want, it's going to give me a histogram with as many bins as I've asked for. If you don't specify an output variable, hist actually makes a plot for you. If you specify an output variable, it's gonna give you the frequencies in each of the bins that you specified. There's a, another function called bar, which we'll talk about. So then what I'm doing here is much I obtain, so I sum up, so what is this for loop doing? Can anybody tell me what this for loop is doing? Or just actually just this inner for loop. Do you have any sense of what that's doing here? Right, so yeah, so does that make sense? So for one, six, 11, and 16, different random variables, I'm going through each one, so when I have six different random variables, then six times I will be adding rand one comma sample n to itself, which means I'm basically summing up six random variables with the uniform distribution. Then I further treat this, I divide this by number i, which is to do what? That is to take the mean, right? And then I do minus 0.5, which is to do what? Anybody, any guesses? Set the mean to zero, right? And then I multiply it by this weird looking number. Why do I do this, any guesses? Yeah, so square root, so one over 12 is actually the standard deviation of uniform distribution. And then I'm correcting that with uh, the fact that, you must have seen this before, is that as you, um, you know how with Gaussians, when you add Gaussians, you get sigma square over n becomes the error. So that's correcting for that n. 
And then I'm going to plot this resultant distribution I get, right? And on the same figure, or actually, and so, so I plot that, and then the other thing I do is I will re-bin it and normalize it, and the reason I'm going to re-bin it is because in this case, I haven't specified the bin center, so it's just going to pick a default number of bin centers. There's, I've just specified here the vector. So I tell it now, give me the same bin centers as what I use for my normal distribution. So I can pick that. And note that bar can be used with the frequency data. So if you tell bar the bin centers and the frequency data, then it can plot the histogram for you. So just remember the difference between hist and bar. So when I do that, something like this. So the idea is this is corresponds to having just one uniform random variable as it makes sense that the experimental distribution I obtain is just like a uniform distribution. As I go through, you can see that by the time I hit 16, I'm pretty close to the actual normal distribution. Go through this example on your own. Um, if there are any questions right now, I can answer them. But sort of ju just the general intuition is everybody sort of on this following what's going on. The technical details, maybe you can also look back. Does, do people know about DFIT tool? I wanted to also briefly mention that. It's a quick way of, um, so I'm just going to quickly tell you. It's a quick way of, so you, it's just a use GUI that MATLAB has by default in itself. So. This comes up when I enter DFIT tool, and then you say data, and distribution mean here in this case contains my, this is for n is 16, for 16 random variables. This is, I just knew this from before, this is what my distribution looked like, because this was the last variable in the workspace that I had. You can just say create data set here, and then you can just literally fit, and then you can also do a bunch of fittings here. So it's just a quick GUI way in MATLAB to be able to do fitting, okay? Something that might be useful to you. Okay? Called the fit tool. You can just fit. It'll give you some of the values the standard variables. Okay? Cool. Central limit theorem, we did that. We talked about hist and bar. Again, hist is used if you have you know, a bunch of values from a distribution and you want to just bin them and display the data, for bar, you actually have the frequency for the different bins already with you, and then you use it to plot the histogram. Those are different, right? In one case, you have the entire vector of just sample the values. In the other case, in bar, you have the actual frequencies in different bins, and then you plot that. So far, so good? So now, this is my question to you. How would you view this command now? What does this command mean? If I just tell you mean a rand of 1, 100,000. In relationship to a normal distribution, how would you interpret this? So, Think of this as, so mean of 100,000 uniform random variables. That's what I get from this. So what is that? It, it's, it's one, it's a sampling from a normal distribution, right? This is just one number. So this is a sampling from a normal distribution. And what normal distribution is it a sampling from? Is it the standard normal? Point to 0.5. Does that make sense? Because the mean in this case of the random dis of the uniform distribution is 0.5. So when you take the mean of like 100,000 such variables, the mean is not going to shift. You would expect that, right? Just generally throughout the whole Gaussian part of it. If I take a lot of random numbers and I take the mean of them, you would expect that to be 0.5, right? If the distribution is 0 to 1. So it's a sampling from a Gaussian distribution with mean 0.5, and what's the standard deviation of that Gaussian distribution? So it'll be calculated using sigma squared by n, where you have sigma squared is 1 over 12, and n would probably be 100,000. 
that will be the variance, and then for standard deviation, you'll take the square root of that. Does that make sense? It's a weird way of looking at this, but that's what it is, actually. <laughs> 